in the little limousines. Really think I'm seeing things. Read the line in mid between. Yellow light, I gotta speed up. Get home to a cold shower. Need that. Pronto. Look, look, look like a rave at the condo. Heck of a night in Toronto. She said, boy, you in Morocco. Pearl White mention in the top go. Fill up my cup with the pop wall. High off life in the spot though. Running at the visa. Really talking to a real life. <laughs> what is up my friends we are back for another episode of dr yogg's clinic i am brandon osborne aka control for days i don't know why i pointed in that direction but it felt like the right thing to do uh we are running a modern league match with the deck black green yogg moth hence hence the name of this series i'm going to show you the ins and the outs of this matchup how to win what to do what not to do how to achieve victory with this amazing deck. Um, yeah, that's what we're here for. Uh, the list we're running today, I don't know if you noticed, a little bit different. I am testing out Prosperous Innkeeper. It has been all the rage uh, as of recently. It's replacing Wall of Roots, which I'm a little skeptical uh, about its efficacy in terms of it being better than Wall of Roots, but we're gonna try it. Gives the deck a little bit more combo potential. We are... On the draw this game, our opening seven is strong. We are going to keep unknown opponent. Let's go. So this hand has a turn two Gris, turn three Yawgmoth, has Court of Calling, which can fetch us an undying creature. We also have access to Besajel, Besaju, uh, which can act as a spell or a land. So this is a very versatile and strong hand. We would love a young wolf, however, given the monkey coming off the top. So right off the bat, we're thinking uh, blue, red, mark tide, uh, which that further makes us think that. Uh, they looked at our top card. Hopefully it was a young wolf. It was a birds of paradise. And um, all right, so there's a little bit of a tricky spot here. So Besaju actually has potential in this matchup if they have a blood moon. Um, but we do want to preserve our life total at the same time uh, with Overgrown Tomb. But I think I think we're going to take the hit. And we're giving them information here. Well, no, we're not because we're playing out the bird, which they saw. Um, so we're going to go from there. Generally in this matchup, being on the play is a big deal. Having an aggressive hand is a big deal. You want undying creatures in your opening hand, uh, which this does not. So this actually doesn't really line up particularly well against what they're doing because we're really on the back foot. Um, but kind of take what you can get here. Um, so this turn, I actually don't think we're going to play the Grist. I think we're going to lead with the Innkeeper and then play the, um, the Hierarch, see if we can gain some life. The Innkeeper is actually a pretty good draw. Um, and if they blow a counter on that, I think we're fine with that happening. And the innkeeper also serves as a blocker for the Ragavan. All right, so they're popping a counter spell on that. I am okay with that happening. Play out the Hierarch and pass the turn. And there's a chance I might even chump block here. Uh, if they don't have another land, they could be in big, big trouble. I think we're gonna chump block. And then if they tap out to kill our birds, we have the Grist as well. And they did not hit their land, so we're going to have a Yawgmoth in play. And I would imagine, I'm going to guess we see them scoop from this point. Um, so there's Yawgmoth. They have two card types in the graveyard, so they can't unholy heat our Yawg. They kept a very risky hand. They were banking on this Ragavan going all the way. It did not. They lost the game. We came from behind. It was a comeback. Victory. Sideboard. Let's take a look. Let's see what we're working with here. Go to our handy dandy sideboard guide, which is linked in the description below. It has not been updated as of yet at the point this video is recorded. Post Lurus ban. I'm hoping to do that at some point in the near future. So. Keep an eye out for that. 
All right, we got disconnected there for a moment. We are back. Um, not sure why all our cards are looking like this. Hopefully we can submit our deck. Uh, we're gonna put in Thought Seizes, Scavenging Ooze, Endurance. And we are going to cut. I'm not so sure how good Hepatra is here. Um, definitely shaving Eldritch Evolutions. I do not like Evolutions in matchups with a ton of counter spells. We're also gonna shave on Hierarchs. Um, and I'm gonna assume they're shaving Ragavans. So I'm actually gonna shave a Wolf over a Strangle Root Geist. So we'll run like that. We'll see how Hepatra is. I don't really know. I haven't played the card a ton. Um, a small handful of matches at this point. So we'll see if it's worth it. This hand is fine. We're lacking a third land, but I think it's a keep. And they have Mulligan down to six, so we'll see. We're on the draw, so I feel like in two or three turns we should be able to pull a third land. Playing out a bobble. I'm not exactly sure at this point if these lists are running Fury still. I know there was a brief period of time where they were running two or three Furies in the 75, which is definitely something to keep on your radar if you're playing this matchup, that there, there's potential that that card is, is lurking. So you don't want to overcommit one drops to the board if you have the ability to prevent it. Um, so we drew our land, so that's good. Um, and I think I'm actually going to lead with the Peat land and potentially play the Tomb Tapped next turn. So while we're taking a damage now, it might save us a damage in the long run. Having access to Endurance is really, really strong. Um, I don't think, I think we can attack. I think if they had a Ragavan it would be on the battlefield at this point. And I don't think we're gonna cord for zero. Maybe I was supposed to. I mean, that's a pretty obvious thing if I do that. Um, I think they'd be pretty aware of what was going on there if I didn't attack and didn't, and, and played my overgrown tomb out untapped. Um, And this can be a very, very tricky matchup. Um, the first, when I first started playing Yawgmoth and I first started playing against this deck, that's a really good draw. Uh, I started out 0-7 in this matchup. And since then, I have been 11-2 uh, No, I've been 18 and 10. So I think it's a favorable matchup, but it does take some practice to get used to the lines. Uh, we're gonna Endurance here. Are we gonna Endurance? Yeah, I think we'll Endurance. I think we'll take advantage of this while we can. I'm trying to cut them off of Murktide, trying to cut them off of Unholy Heat trying to limit their dragons for eight channelers. So make use of our cards when we have the opportunity to cast them. And that's kind of what you want to do. You don't want to feed into their game plan, which is fill up the graveyard and play reactively. So you want to kind of find your holes, find your, your moments where you can kind of sneak in, little points of damage, sneak in endurance, sneak in a cord, and then leverage those moments. Um, to cruise to victory. So our hand is just stacked right now, but I'm actually not gonna play anything out. Uh, I'm just gonna swing in for another four. I'll leave Endurance up. I'll Endurance EOT if they counter it, that's fine. Our hand is gas, and then uh, if they don't counter it, they're in big, big trouble. Okay, are they gonna double Unholy Heat our Endurance? I think. That's fine, and we're gonna play out our other Endurance now. No graveyard for you.
So I think our best draw here is a green source um, because it lets us to lets us continue to play this reactive instant speed game plan. Um, I'm not going to give them the opportunity to put a card in their graveyard. I'm just going to keep chipping away. <laughs> that further facilitates this game plan here. So we're just chipping away and then they'll we have lethal next turn if they don't have an answer. They're going to double bolt again. So the card advantage we're generating here is pretty significant. for you. That is the theme of this matchup. No graveyard for you. I won't allow it. Alright, they play an iteration. Let's see how this looks. I mean, they're looking for a land here, first and foremost. I found their land. Pretty land at that. I like these new full art Japanese inspired lands. I think they're pretty cool. So they have one mana up. And a Grist is a pretty strong draw as well. So they're at, so we can six them right now, which would be strong. I think I'm just gonna hit them for four. And then I'm gonna play out my Grist. I don't think they'll be able to win from this position. I think they're pretty, pretty much dead at this point. We got double hit off of that as well. It's kind of like insult to injury. They really didn't have much of a, much of a hope. All right. This is the second creature we've seen them cast up to this point. I'm imagining they're holding up a counter spell. Um, so once again, I'm not going to play into their game plan. Um, I'm going to grist down the Dragon's Rage and then swing for lethal. And then if they, uh, if they have something to do in response to that, uh, we'll be able to sneak in another one of our threats. And I'm not so worried about them killing the grist at this point just because our board state is so advantaged. So like if they have to use a bolt or something like that on, on an insect token, it's really not good for them, which is what just happened. And I understand they're trying to fill their graveyard, but that's a mistake now because it gives us the opening and the opportunity to play out the Strangle Rootgeist, so they're just going to die anyway. And I guess we could have played Innkeeper into Geist, which would have been the correct line but we didn't do that. Um, it's, I almost don't even think of the Innkeeper as if it's a mana creature. I think of it as like this utility life gain combo card, but it does produce mana as well. So that would have been the correct line of play there. Um, two games, fairly uneventful. They mulliganed uh, and kept, I think, some not so great hands. Um, but in spite of that, I do think this matchup is favored only if you are proficient with the deck. Um, if you are not, this matchup can feel like a slog, it can feel like an uphill battle, it can be very challenging. But to reiterate, get down on dying creatures quickly, fit your cards in at instant speed or in moments where they are not, they don't have the ability to react favorably and limit their graveyard at all costs. You do those things, I think those three things. You do those three things, you'll be successful more times than not in this matchup. Last thing, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the match, I'll mention again, be mindful of Blood Moon when playing against this matchup because it is something that they do play in their main deck and it should be on your radar. That being said, I'm checking out Brandon Osborne, Control for Days, Dr. Yogwans Clinic. Subscribe, thumbs up, give me a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you think about this matchup. If you have anything else to add to the matchup that I didn't really talk about or we didn't really see, Match was pretty quick. They didn't really interact too, too much. Um, so I'd be curious to hear what your thoughts are on this matchup from one side of the table or the other. Let me know. That being said, I am checking out. I will see you next time. Until then, be well.